Thunder and opts out after one season and then signs a max deal next summer, he would make $228 million over six years. Now, if he signs a two-year deal with another team and opts out after one year, then signs a max deal next summer, he would make an expected $176 million over those five years. That is one less year of guaranteed salary in $50 million we're talking about, Stephen A. How much do you think money is going to play in Kevin Durant's decision for his future? Well, money always plays a role to some degree. Um, I would say the second option of a two-year deal opting out of uh, opting out after one year and then re-signing with OKC or signing with another team, um, you know, that would probably be uh, the better option, assuming that he's really contemplating departing from Oklahoma City. It's one thing to cost yourself $50 million because you can make that up um, in the marketing in the marketing realm. You can also make that up by going to a state where there's no state income tax and, you know, you can make some of it up. Of course, not all of it, but ultimately it's not that big of a difference. There's a huge discrepancy between between being able to sign uh, a two-year deal with an opt-out after one and then re-upping with Oklahoma City and getting $228 million over the next six years or going someplace else this summer and just signing for $111 million over four years. That's a huge discrepancy, and that's not something that I think will easily transpire. In the end, what it comes down to is this. Uh, the long-term prospects of Kevin Durant remaining in Oklahoma City Thunder uh, appears to be a huge question mark. Do I think that he'll probably elect to stay an additional year as opposed to leaving this summer? I definitely think that's possible, uh, particularly considering the fact that Russell Westbrook will be a free agent come next summer. And the possibility of being free agents at the same time may be something that's appealing to both. Because like I said, they got a lot of love for one another. Um, even though, you know, Russell Westbrook can be a headache at times, Kevin Durant loves him like a little brother and, and the feeling is mutual. So, and plus Russell Westbrook is great. And how many players Places can you go in the NBA where you're going to have a teammate with the talent of Russell Westbrook as a partner? So I think those are the kind of things that they take into consideration. But in Kevin Durant's case, I think if it were just about Kevin Durant, Skip, it would be fine. The problem is, is that he has a tight inner circle. Um, you know, his business manager, his representative for Rock Nation and beyond. And that tight circle, Skip, are in his ear talking about the marketability and the branding of Kevin Durant and how successful he could be in another stratosphere in so many different venues if indeed he were to depart from Oklahoma City. The only time it makes no difference as to where he goes is if he wins a championship. But if he doesn't win a championship and Steph Curry is winning championships and LeBron James are winning championships, then it's a problem. Even D-Wade, D-Wade is somebody that doesn't have to win a ring, Skip, because he already has three, okay? But Kevin Durant has none. And so because of that, the desperation and the focus is on winning a championship. If you don't win a championship, then in Kevin Durant's eyes, it may very well come down to the possibility that the only reason you're in OKC is because you're there for the money, as opposed to really being about the business of capturing rings. Because the way it looks right now, Golden State's not going anywhere. And LeBron James and Cleveland don't appear to be going anywhere either. Kevin Durant, his priority is winning a championship. He knows the money is going to be there. And as we discussed yesterday, the outcome of this year's playoffs will play greatly in this equation as to which way he goes. That is correct. I'm going to stick with my initial gut feeling. I'm going to say that despite the, the scenario you painted where, where he could stay for the year to see what Westbrook does, where you'd have the one last year, that's intriguing to me. But my gut feeling is Kevin Durant will go elsewhere this coming summer. I don't think they're going to win the championship this year in Oklahoma City. Could be wrong. We'll see how it plays out. But the one number that did jump out at me, Stephen A., was right now Kevin Durant makes $19.1 million. If he chose to stay in Oklahoma City in the final year of that contract, he would make $45.8 million. So you go from 19 to 45. Now, that, that's, that's eye-opening to me. But to your point, marketability in Oklahoma City is not, not that it the, the, Kevin Durant gets his national TV commercials we know that it's not that you can't be marketed in Oklahoma City but let's just for hypothetical sake what if he became a New York Nick could he make more money in New York City than he can in Oklahoma City I'm pretty sure he could reportedly he makes 300 million already from Nike in his current contract could could that double 
if you were in a bigger market, Big Apple, LA, who knows? Sure, it could. And yet, I hark back to something Kevin Durant said two days ago when he was asked about David West's sacrifice that he made. Now again, David West is not Kevin Durant, 35 years of age. You know and I know what happened. He said, heck with the money, I've made enough, I want a ring, I want a chance. So he chose to play for Coach Popovich for veteran minimum and left a whole lot of money on the table in Indianapolis. So Kevin said the other day, Kevin Durant said, money, money isn't everything in life. We tend to think about taking care of our family, being financially stable, but from the outside looking in, and then he went on to say, it looked like this guy, David West said, I, I want to chase the ultimate prize in the sport, a ring. And, and to me, that indicated that Kevin, pretty quickly, if they don't win this year, he's going to want to chase the ultimate prize. Wherever he thinks that would best be won will be where he'll wind up, I think, this coming summer. I think it's possible. I don't know, obviously, but I will tell you that I definitely think it's possible because, you know, Kevin Durant's a superstar. And it's hard being in the company of the people he's in company with, and he's the one without a ring. It's hard watching Steph Curry come out of nowhere and literally take the NBA by storm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Steph Curry has elevated his stature to a point where he, uh, you know, when you think about LeBron James, if, if LeBron loses to this guy again, how are you going to call him King James? His name will be forever LeBron. I mean, it's one of those situations. And if you're, if you're Kevin Durant, you're not even a part of that equation if you can't even get yourself to the finals. And so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a dicey situation to say the least, uh, but his talent demands something more than what the results have reaped. I certainly don't put him uh, solely responsible for that. But then again, it's hard because when you look at Sam Presti, he could have tweaked something here or there. But for the most part, the roster is a consistent championship contender. It it's is. not I one agree. of those situations where, you, where yeah. you're looking at Kevin Durant and saying, damn, could you get no. some help around no. him? Mm -hmm. You can't say got that. Sam Presti's got a lot of help around yeah, him. He does. So, I mean, he's got – Kevin Durant has got to show up and, and get it done because the parts around him are there. Yep. They're there. It'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. But first, he's got a game five tonight. And speaking of marketing dollars, Bryce Harper just signed a huge deal with Under Armour. He's been stealing the headlines earlier this season, and it continued last night. What is the latest story involving the national superstar? We'll tell you. We'll react to it. Just to lay down the law, that was unacceptable. I don't care how big a star he is. I don't care if he's the biggest draw in the sport. I don't care what he is. That was completely out of bounds, what he pulled off. Remember, his teammate had just hit a walk-off home run. So even though he had been thrown out earlier in the game, that gave him time to run all the way from the clubhouse to home plate, ostensibly to celebrate with his teammates at home plate. He merely took that opportunity to continue to scream at the umpire, as he said, a few more choice words to that umpire. No sport allows its coaches, managers, players to abuse the authority figures, the umpires, the way baseball does. It's often completely out of control what they're allowed to get away with that they would never be allowed to get away with in the National Football League or the National Basketball Association. This is another glaring case of that and I just wish somebody would support the umpires and give them a little of their authority back. In this case, you're ejected, you better stay ejected, and you shouldn't take that opportunity to run out and continue to scream at the guy who had kicked you out. What if Sean Livingston had been able to do that at the end of the game last night? This commissioner of the NBA would have a problem, and certainly the past commissioner would really have had a problem with that in David Stern. Skip Bayless, let me say this. In some respects, I agree with you. I think on a day like today, when you consider the fact that a walk-off homer had just been registered by Cliff Robinson and Bryce Harper comes out and does what he does in terms of screaming an expletive at the umpire, I definitely believe that Bryce Harper should be suspended for a game. I agree with you there. He wasn't walked six times. He was pitched to last night. He struck out legitimately. Now, there are times that, that last strikeout I didn't agree with. I thought that was high. I thought that should not have been a, a strikeout. A matter of fact, I thought because he had been arguing and chirping at the umpire all night, the umpire called that unfairly. Okay? But he nevertheless, he struck out. He was pitched to. Um, and 
you, he does come across as a bit too young and a bit too privileged. Uh, he was bat He finished the year batting 330 last year. He's down 70 points, batting 260 right now. 10 home runs, 27 RBIs. Uh, he's not. He hasn't been himself as of late. All of that is true. But let's also be clear here. While I agree with you that he should be suspended for a game, while I agree with you that his behavior was unacceptable, particularly when you can't challenge balls and strikes and you can't keep coming at an umpire like he did last night, you look at it in an isolated perspective. Yeah, I get that. But I can't ignore how I see baseball umpires behaving. They antagonize baseball players all the time. They act like people come to the park to see them. They abuse their authority. And that's what I think is going unnoticed. You never heard me intimate such a thing when it came to Sean Livingston getting ejected last night by the referee in a, in a Golden State Warriors Portland Trailblazers game. Because NBA referees don't conduct themselves like that. Yeah. When a football player gets thrown out, you don't hear us questioning it because usually they bring something upon themselves because NFL officials are not known to be that way. But when it comes to baseball umpires, they antagonize, they exacerbate, they do little to nothing to diffuse, to diffuse a situation. They invite conflict and they instigate a lot more often than not. And that has to stop. That has to stop because we don't come to the park to see them play. Yeah, I got it. It's just open warfare for years upon years between the players and the umpires. That doesn't excuse yeah. Bryce Harper. No, But I'm talking about a culture. I got it. Yep. Those, they, they invite this stuff. We'll leave it there. Back to the association when we come back. He is one of the greatest players ever. So will tonight be the last time we see Timmy play in front of the San Antonio crowd? What did you call him? Stay tuned. Oh. Timmy! Uh